Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Pit Fighter. Pit Fighter is a fighting game that was developed by Atari Games in 1990. When I first saw the attract screen for Pit Fighter, man, it just made me want to work out and take a karate class. The game was just oozing testosterone and I was pumped. It was like the first game I saw that used digitized sprites. Well, actually the second game. China Warrior used digitized sprites too. If you don't know what digitized sprites are, it's basically like using real actors or footage, making them digital and putting it into the game. It sort of made a big splash in the late 80s and early 90s until the advent of 3D polygonal graphics. The standard practice for digitized sprites was to capture the image, redraw them, and put it together in kind of a rotoscope animation process. In Pit Fighter, instead of redrawing, all the characters' moves were performed in front of a blue screen, so the moves by the on-screen characters are actually replays of actual footage rather than redrawn animations. But before I go on, let me just give you a little backstory of what was going on around this time. A new martial arts craze was going on because of Bloodsport. I mean, it was pretty influential because it was an underground fight tournament in a foreign place that was supposed supposedly based on a true story. You know, personally, I think it was just all hyperbole, but you can clearly see the influence on the game. To help recreate this underground fight atmosphere, Gary Stark, who was the designer and programmer for Pit Fighter, rounded up some guys from his local gym and invited them to go to town on him in front of a blue screen so the moves could look as lifelike as possible. Well, almost lifelike. This pursuit for realism made the game exceptional in terms of aesthetics, but maybe by not strategically using a combination of both replay footage and redrawn animation made the game appear a bit choppy. I mean, if you do a side-by-side -side screenshot comparison with this game and Mortal Kombat, you have to agree that Pit Fighter looks like the better game. The thing about Pit Fighter was just the gameplay. This, coupled together with clunky controls, made the game rather unpopular pretty quickly. This is possibly why most of the arcade cabinets got converted into Street Fighter 2 cabinets a year later. However, I did think the game was pretty innovative for the time and I did think it had a lot of potential despite popular opinion. In this game, you have a choice of up to three fighters who can participate simultaneously in a series of underground fights for fame, fortune, and glory. The game plays more like a side-scrolling beat-em-up, so there's no real fight strategy like in the other 2D fighting games or wrestling games for that matter. You just end up doing basically what I do for these games. Approach your opponent at an angle to avoid direct attacks, attack, and rinse and repeat. It's not an exact science, but it works for me. If you hit all three buttons simultaneously, your character will perform their special attack. During the match, you can find weapons or items that can be used against your opponent and stay away from the crowds. You'll be thrown back into the fighting area if you get too close and sometimes crowd members interfere in the fights too so watch out. You have to fight through 10 different matches before your last fight with the masked warrior. Occasionally when you break open crates, you're gonna find these little green pills with a P on it. Those are like power-ups. Grab it before your enemy does. There's a grudge match after every third fight where you have to fight a clone if you're playing solo or go head-to-head -head against other players if you're playing cooperatively. The last grudge match is an elimination round where you have to go head to head with the other players but only the victor of the elimination match will go on to fight in the championship match. Other players will be unable to join in at this point. Fun fact, according to Electronic Gaming Monthly issue 49 pages 134 to 135, Tangen was working on a sequel to Pit Fighter for the Sega Genesis in 1993 that was 75% complete, but for some reason or another, it never saw the light of day. The sequel also featured three additional fighters, Tanya, Connor, and Chief from Guardians of the Hood. And Guardians of the Hood is not a sequel to Pit Fighter. Pit Fighter had numerous home ports, but since using digitized sprites at that time took up a considerable amount of memory, a lot of the aspects of the game were edited out of the home ports, such as characters, zoom, music, etc which is why the home ports was even subjected to even worse scrutiny than the original arcade game. It wasn't until the game was available on Midway Classics Collection for the next-gen systems at the time that Pit Fighter was enjoyed in all its original glory. Now you have to understand, at this point in arcade history, arcade games were making a subtle transition. This point I'm talking about is the late 80s to 1990. I felt that the rationale for game developers in the early 80s was to make games extremely difficult so players would spend more time to progress to the game. At the same time, 8-bit home versions of the game, non-ports, sometimes offered a better gaming experience. 
but the allure of arcade games was still there because of the graphics. I mean, you could not get that quality at home until the 16-bit revolution where it came pretty close. So arcade games started to become more fun and intuitive instead of being ridiculously hard. I think in efforts to attract more people to the arcades. Concurrently, because of improved tech, there was a boom in experimentation and innovation as well. Pit Fighter was one of those innovative ideas. It looked amazing. But in contrast with the other games being released during this time, the gameplay was just a bit lackluster and at a time where players started to demand more from their games. This shouldn't have the real Pit Fighter as a series though because the original Fatal Fury and Street Fighter games had horrible controls as well. I mean, go ahead and try to throw a Hadouken in the original Street Fighter and tell me how that works out for you. So the criticism was clear when it came down to Pit Fighter and, and it's something that they could have polished up with a few more sequels. However, because Street Fighter 2 was released months later, this would have unfortunately hindered any future growth of this series. I do believe that if Atari Games continued to promote and worked on Pit Fighter as a series, it possibly would have eventually evolved into a popular gaming franchise. With that being said, tape up your fist, put some Vaseline on your face, get in the pit, play this game, and let me know what you think.